A lot of people are going to be confused on how to solve this algebra equation because of this part right here. I'm going to fully explain this in just one second, but first let me tell you who I am. My name is John and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link below. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so once again, the confusing part about this equation for most people is this right here. So we have x to the 0.3 with this little bar over it. So what does this mean in mathematics? Well, if you don't know what this means, you're going to have a tough time solving this equation. So we have x to the 0.3 with this bar over it is equal to negative 2. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about what this little bar means over this 0.3. Okay, so this is 0.3 and this is 0.3 with a bar over it. So what we say with this uh, notation right here, that this is 0.3 repeating. So this is 0.3 all by itself. This 0.3 repeating means that this digit 3 is repeating infinitely. So what we have here is actually this. So 0.3 is the fraction or the decimal 3 tenths. So you can express the fraction 0.3 as 3 over 10. But 0.3 repeating means take uh, this 0.3 and just keep adding 3s. The 3, the threes here are repeating infinitely. So this is not the same thing as 0.3. Again, 0.3 is equivalent to the fraction 3 tenths. But uh, 0.3 repeating also has a fraction equivalent, and that is 1 third. So if you have your calculator handy and you take 1 and divide it by 3, you're not going to get 0.3. You will get 0.3 repeating. Okay, so this is really important, this repeating bar, because if you can't interpret what this means, you can't solve this equation. So what we have here, again, is not 3 tenths. We have 1 third. All right, so instead of writing a bunch of 3s like this, we just use this notation, 0.3 repeating, because the 3 this digit is repeating. Okay, so now we can take a look at this equation. x to the 0.3 uh, repeating is equal to negative 2. And think of this 0.3 as the fraction 1 third. All right, so now we need to figure out how to solve x to the 1 third is equal to negative 2. Okay, a key concept here to solve this equation is to realize that x to the 1 third power is equivalent to the cube root of x. So for example, if you have the square root of x, this is equal to x to the 1 half power. So this right here is called a rational exponent. And when we're talking about square roots, we're really talking about something called radicals. So this little radical here in a square root, this really a little 2 right here. So this number becomes the denominator, and 1 is always the numerator when we write a radical as a rational exponent. A rational number is simply a number that is a fraction made up of integers. So uh, this, again, x to the 1 third power is the same thing as the cube root of x. Now, this is important because if I asked you, uh, the cube root of what number is equal to 2? Let's just forget about this negative 2 here for a second. So hopefully you understand what the cube root is, right? So the cube root is a number such that when you multiply it by itself, you get back to this number inside of the cube root, all right? So if we already know that the answer is 2, the cube root of what number is 2, well, to get back to this answer, all we have to do is take 2 and multiply it by itself three times. So the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, maybe the answer here is negative 8. Well, if you're thinking in those terms, you are thinking on the right track. But there is a very easy way to solve this type of equation when we have uh, an equation expressed with rational, ex uh, rational exponents. Excuse me. Real quick, if you want my best math instruction, you definitely got to check out my full courses. Again, you can find links to these in the description of this video. But they span basic math to advanced math and everything in between. Okay, so let's keep going with this problem. And don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. So to solve an equation where you have a rational exponent, and again, a rational exponent is an exponent. And let's just make sure you understand, if I have like 2 to the x power, 
this part of this power is the exponent. So here we have a rational exponent, and I keep using that word rational, and that means fraction, or a fraction that you can express out of integers. Okay, so we have x to the one-third. Again, this is a rational exponent. But what we're looking for to solve this equation is not x to the one-third. We just want x, or x to the first power. So we need to be thinking about how can we take a one-third and make it into a one. Well, to do this, all we have to do is multiply a three by a one-third, and you get a one. So to solve for x, we need to raise this side of the equation by three, or take x to the one-third to the third power. Now, there is a property of powers and exponents. Let's just make sure you understand it. If I have two cubed squared, this is equal to two to the sixth power. So you can multiply the outside exponent to the inside exponent. Of course, the answer here is two to the sixth power. Okay, so now we have to follow the golden rule of algebra, and that is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. So what we wanna do is take both sides of the equation to the third power. Okay, so three times one third is going to be one or x to the first or x, and then negative two to the third power is negative two times itself three times. Okay, so negative two times negative two, this is a positive four times a negative two. So our final answer here is x is equal to negative eight. Okay, so if you got this right, that is fantastic. You definitely get a nice little happy face and an A+. Plus. But just remember that learning math is a journey. And the simple fact that you are practicing right now is awesome. All right, so again, if you need help with mathematics, make sure to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to all of that in the description below. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.